Okay, for this lesson, we are going to talk about Rene Magritte. I don't even know if that's kind of, I tried to look it up. There's different ways that they say it, Magritte. But just so you know, he is a surrealistic artist. And surrealism is basically taking real objects and kind of putting them in an unnatural, impossible way. So for example, the inside of your eye cannot look like the sky. This is gonna be kind of playing off when you were in fifth grade and we didn't, I don't even think we got finished. I think we were just getting to it when we were doing your pop art project. This is kind of kind of going with that, but we're gonna kind of do it in a little bit reverse order. Okay, so let's just take a look at some of his artwork. And if you notice, it's doing realistic things in unnatural areas. It's impossible to have a piece of, uh, it's a paper, and then you're seeing through the paper. Again, clouds of a person. That's impossible for that to actually work. This is all part of surrealism. What I want to focus on are a lot of these pictures. And what we're going to work on are silhouettes. Okay, this is a silhouette of a man, right? And that's what we want to combine. We want to combine a silhouette with a setting, which is a place, and texture. And texture can be drawn in, such as, as you can see, here's some texture here. It's a brick wall. Or we can do what you did or started to do in fifth grade, which is hatching or cross hatching. And I will show you and go over those again so you give you a reminder. Again, here's a silhouette of a bird, and it's actually done as the same as the trees. There's another just silhouette of the head, and you can see. Now, instead of just doing a black background, that is where maybe if you wanted to do just a texture and a setting. What's the setting here? It's nighttime, it's the sky. So it could be that simple but this has to have some type of a texture to it, whether you draw it in again or use hatching or cross hatching. Here we go again. We just have the, the water and the night sky with clouds and it's just a silhouette of a bird. As you can see, he was kind of fond of the birds. There's another example. It's kind of interesting. Your silhouette can be anything you want. Make it personal. Make it something about you, something you like and I'll show you a few examples. So again, you see the idea. What we're gonna be drawing is a silhouette of something, and then you're gonna choose one to be a setting and one to be a texture. And again, this is just water throughout the whole ship. So this, this texture here is throughout the whole ship, and then the setting is the normal setting. And this is wood grain. It might not be very hard to see, uh, so that's wood, and then you have the setting, which is trees. So we're gonna create a picture. You're gonna use colored pencils, markers, and crayons. Again, I don't have that up here because that, I forgot to put it on there, actually. So colored pencils, crayons, markers, any combination of those. That's what you're gonna be doing for all your projects. And then we're gonna have the outline of the image and a setting and a texture. So what does a silhouette look like? Here are a few. So here's a couple different versions of a silhouette. Obviously you can go, realize though, if you do something like this, the more detailed it is, the harder it is to draw. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is on your Chromebook or if you have a computer at home, just pull up some type of a silhouette. It is up to you what the image is. Your paper will be able to go up and down or sideways, that it depends on your image. Obviously, if I did that as my picture, I would have my paper going up and down. I actually chose to do this duck right here, and I'll move you over and I have it all drawn out, and then I'm gonna show you how I would set up my texture and my setting, and that is going to be your surrealistic art project for sixth grade. All right, so I have my silhouette drawing, and as you can see, here's my duck, and I have parts parts done and parts not done, so I, can, I wanna show you a different way to create texture. I don't know if you guys all got to it last year in fifth grade, but we started to do that for your um, pop art project where I taught you how to do, taught you how to do hatching and cross hatching. I'm gonna revisit that for you, because that gives you another option here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two textured background. So my background is going to be a brick wall, which I have outlined in red. What I would do, I don't like it white, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of shade it in really light with this black. 
Now, I'm not gonna do throw the whole thing, but what I want you to use for this project is markers, crayons, colored pencils, any combination. If you're gonna do hatching and cross hatching, um, the markers are great to use if you have skinny ones. It's a lot easier. If you use thick ones, it's it's kind of hard because they're the 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 um the tip is too broad. So you want a nice skinny marker, um, or you can use colored pencils or crayons. Um, I like the markers with that, with the hatching and cross hatching, because it's nice and bright and vibrant. So there's my little bit of shading here to create some texture. I haven't drawn in what this is. I'll talk about that in a second. So now let's do what we call hatching. So the idea behind hatching is you want to have something that's very close together and then slowly spreads apart. There's two ways that you can do circles, squares, or triangles. Um, I would keep it to those. If you get out, outside of any other shape, it gets too, it's too much detail. You wanna keep these simple. I prefer circles. I just think they look neat. So here's how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm gonna put a dot. And under the dot, I'm gonna draw a circle. And around that circle, I'm gonna put another circle. And then I'm gonna keep adding circles. And then what I'm gonna do though, is I add more circles, I'm gonna slowly kind of start spreading them apart. And then you just decide how big you wanna make them. So now I'm gonna do my next one. I'm gonna switch colors because it's kind of interesting to do that. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna do another circle. A dot, I always start with a dot, and then I put the circles around it. And I'm going kind of quick. I would take a little more time to make this a little neater, but I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me do this, even when we do it in class. I don't want to spend my time. I want you to spend your time working. So if you notice, as my circles get bigger, they overlap. So now I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna go right here. And so all I'm doing is diff two different color, uh, like a greenish blue, a blue, and then this green that is dying on me. Oh no, should have checked that before I got this marker. Well, you can still kind of see it looks like a light green. And then I might have one more circle. So that is known as hatching. Now, there is another form that we call cross hatching. And for cross hatching, there's two ways to do it. I'm gonna show you both ways. I'll tell you this, I would stick to the easy way. It is much easier than trying to do um, both way or trying to do the harder way. So the easy way of cross hatching is a very simple, simple um, texture, and it's just a pattern. So I'm going to do it over here, right up here by the head. And what it is is I go. I'm just going to do a pattern. I'm going to go one. I like to use five, three, four, five. I go up and down. My next set. Side to side, one, two, three, four, five. And then I alternate up and down, one, two, three, four. One, two. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way down because I don't wanna waste your time, but watch. My next set of lines are gonna go in the opposite. So if I start up and down, I'm gonna do my next set going the opposite. So it's just an up and down, side to side pattern and you just keep alternating. You alternate directions every time you do one line, set of lines next to another one. And again, I'm going awfully fast on this. I would take my time, but again, I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me and listen to me. So then I'm going up and down. Now I go back to my original design. Now notice when I'm doing this, all my lines are always touching each other. There's really no space anywhere in there, except when I go too fast. And then it looks really sloppy, which is happening right now. And let me do one more line, set of lines. So this actually creates the pattern that is on the playground balls that you guys play with, the red and green ones. If you've ever noticed the texture on it, that's what this is. And that is cross hatching. Here's another way of doing cross hatching. It's a little more difficult, but it still has the same quality. 
And what you're gonna do for this is do this, same idea, but you can go in different directions. This is why it's a little more challenging. Because you have to have, and whenever I do this, I always rotate my paper. Because it's so much easier if you automatically turn your paper so you make sure your lines are all going in different directions. The same thing applies though. There should be no space between your lines. But as you can see, this one is just a little bit tougher because you always have to make sure that your lines are going in different directions. Whereas with the first way I showed you, it's just two directions and it makes life so much easier. And I'll give you a close up on these in just a second. Okay, so. So you can see there's a texture that creates, I would do my entire background with this. Now don't switch them, I would stick to one style. You don't have to do both, practice both though. Practice both of them. And again, you can see this one is easy, straight up and down, it goes in two directions. There's the one that goes in multiple directions and that's what the circles look like. Again, you can do that with squares, triangles, you can combine circles, triangles, and squares. And that's fine. So what I have now is I would finish doing one of these textures up here and I have a texture down here and now I would have to do something in here. So what I might say is, you know what I would do? I think I'm gonna make this the water. So I would color this in blue, make my sky. That means I have texture here, I have texture here, and a setting here. A setting is a place. My place is the water with the sky. My texture is my hatching, cross hatching, and a brick wall. You fill out your entire paper that way. Again, use markers, crayons, color pencils, any combination you would like. Make sure you get a nice silhouette that you enjoy using when you, before you even start to do your stuff. And this is your surrealistic piece of artwork. Good luck.